Alexander the Great, the Macedonian king who conquered an empire stretching from Greece to India, met his untimely end in Babylon in 323 BC. Aged just 32, his death shocked the ancient world. He left no clear air, plunging his vast empire into chaos. However, he did leave behind specific instructions for his burial. Alexander wished to be interred in the oasis of Siwa, deep in the Egyptian desert. This sacred site, home to the Oracle of Amun, held deep religious significance for the Egyptians. Alexander himself consulted the Oracle, seeking confirmation of his divine status. Why he chose this remote location over his Macedonian homeland remains a subject of debate amongst historians. Some scholars believe Alexander identified strongly with Egyptian culture and spirituality. He embraced the Pharaonic tradition, declaring himself Pharaoh of Egypt after conquering it. His choice of Siwa, therefore, might reflect his desire to be laid to rest as an Egyptian god-king. However, Alexander's body never reached Siwa. His generals, locked in power struggles, decided to transport his remains to Macedonia instead. However, Ptolemy then Sota, one of Alexander's most trusted generals, who would later become Pharaoh of Egypt, intercepted the funeral procession. He took Alexander's body to Memphis, the ancient capital of Egypt, claiming it was the great king's wish to be buried there. This marked the beginning of a long and convoluted journey for Alexander's remains. The sudden death of Alexander presented a significant challenge preserving his body for what promised to be a lengthy journey. The ancient Egyptians were masters of embalming, having developed sophisticated techniques over millennia. Their methods aimed to preserve the body for the afterlife. They believed that the soul needed a physical form to return to. According to historical accounts, Alexander's body was initially treated by Egyptian embalmers in Babylon. They used traditional methods, removing the internal organs and immersing the body in natron, a naturally occurring salt that dries the flesh. However, the hot Babylonian climate accelerated decomposition. This meant that the embalmers had to work quickly and efficiently to preserve the king's body. Once the initial preservation was complete, Alexander's body, encased in a honey-filled sarcophagus, began its journey to Egypt. Upon reaching Memphis, Egyptian priests undertook a second, more elaborate embalming process. This involved using precious oils, resins and spices to anoint the body. They then wrapped it in fine linen bandages. The entire process, shrouded in secrecy and ritual, took several months to complete. After the elaborate embalming process, Alexander's body was laid to rest in a grand tomb in Memphis. This tomb, befitting his status as a conqueror and a god-king, became a site of pilgrimage. People from across the ancient world flocked to pay homage to the legendary warrior. The location of this tomb, however, remains a mystery. Centuries later, Roman emperors, who considered themselves heirs to Alexander's legacy, continued the tradition of visiting his tomb. Historical records mention emperors like Julius Caesar, Augustus and Caligula making pilgrimages to Alexandria where Alexander's tomb was believed to have been moved from Memphis. These emperors sought not only to honor Alexander, but also to draw legitimacy for their own rule by associating themselves with his legend. The exact location of Alexander's tomb in Alexandria remains unknown. Despite numerous excavations and explorations, it has yet to be discovered. The mystery surrounding its whereabouts continues to captivate historians and archaeologists today. Now let's delve into a captivating hypothesis. Could it be that the tomb of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, discovered in 1922 by Howard Carter, actually holds the remains of Alexander the Great? This theory, while controversial, hinges on intriguing overlaps and inconsistencies in the historical narratives surrounding both figures. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is the location of Tutankhamun's tomb itself. It lies in the Valley of the Kings, a site typically reserved for pharaohs who ruled Egypt. Tutankhamun, a relatively insignificant ruler, seems an unlikely candidate for such a prestigious burial place. Some researchers suggest that his tomb might have initially been intended for a far more prominent figure, Alexander the Great. Adding to the intrigue are the numerous artifacts of Greek origin discovered within Tutankhamun's tomb. These include a trumpet with a Greek inscription, furniture with Greek motifs, and a dagger made of iron, a metal not commonly used in Egyptian weaponry at the time. These findings suggest a strong Greek influence in the burial, 
further fueling speculation about Alexander's potential connection. Examining the physical evidence adds another layer to this intriguing hypothesis. Tutankhamun's mummy, remarkably well preserved, bears several injuries that align with the known wounds of Alexander the Great. One striking detail is a depressed fracture on Tutankhamun's skull, possibly caused by a blow from a heavy object. This injury corresponds to accounts describing Alexander sustaining a head wound during his campaigns in India. Furthermore, Tutankhamun's feet show signs of severe damage, consistent with a condition known as Kohler's disease. This affliction, which affects bone development, could explain Alexander's limp, a detail mentioned by some ancient historians. Could these shared injuries point to the possibility of the two figures being one and the same? Adding to the intrigue, analysis of Tutankhamun's blood type revealed it to be incredibly rare, matching a type found only in individuals of Macedonian descent. This discovery further fuels speculation about a potential link between Tutankhamun and Alexander, who of course was Macedonian. The hypothesis of Alexander being buried in KV-62 finds further support in the unusual mummification and burial practices observed in Tutankhamun's tomb. While the Egyptians traditionally removed the heart during the mummification process, Tutankhamun's heart was left intact. This deviation from tradition aligns with the Macedonian custom of leaving the heart inside the body. Furthermore, the use of specific herbs and plants in Tutankhamun's embalming, such as coriander and celery, points towards Greek influence. These plants, commonly used in ancient Greek funerary rites, were not typically employed in Egyptian embalming. Their presence in Tutankhamun's tomb suggests a possible blending of both Egyptian and Greek traditions. Could this fusion of burial customs reflect an attempt to honor both the Egyptian and Macedonian identities of the deceased? If Tutankhamun was indeed Alexander, the incorporation of Greek rituals alongside traditional Egyptian practices would make sense, offering a poignant testament to the cultural exchange that characterized Alexander's reign. While the evidence presented here is compelling, it's important to acknowledge that the hypothesis of Alexander the Great being buried in Tutankhamun's tomb remains speculative. Further research, including DNA analysis of both mummies, is crucial to either confirm or refute this intriguing theory. However, the possibility, however remote, opens up exciting avenues for historical investigation. It challenges us to re-examine established narratives and consider alternative interpretations of the past. If proven true, this discovery would necessitate a rewriting of history, shedding new light on the lives and deaths of both Alexander the Great and Tutankhamun. The search for Alexander's tomb continues to captivate historians and archaeologists alike. The potential connection to Tutankhamun, while still under scrutiny, reminds us that history is not a fixed and immutable entity, but rather a constantly evolving narrative shaped by new discoveries and interpretations. As we continue to unearth the secrets of the past, we must remain open to the possibility that the truth may be more astonishing than fiction.